GIS, digital mapping, has been around for, for decades. So that's it's quite an old technology, but it's really only been applied to the humanities relatively recently. We do have uh, large data sets that, because of the developments in computer science and in regular uh, standard computers, even laptops, have made this kind of work much easier uh, for art historians. We look at art history across um, all geographic locations, um, all spaces and times, and across all media. So uh, we are interested not only in the history of art objects um, as a preserved in museums or historic houses, palaces, but also architectural history, um, archaeology. All of this is to help make the object itself, the historical object, the spatial object, uh, really much more comprehensible and uh, better to interpret. One of the great contributions of these kinds of digital art history projects is the ability to help us understand in a more um, rich and, and, uh, and informed way how those artworks that now exist perhaps in a museum um, were part of a, a larger, um, complex, three-dimensional uh, setting. It actually lets you think about how people lived in these spaces, moved through these spaces, how artworks interacted and would have been seen and understood in relationship to one another um, in their original setting. That's a digital map where you have, uh, you could search various points, so you could search say a thousand buildings in a city instead of one building in a city, uh, but it can also include 3D environments where you're actually building up uh, those, those, those architectural monuments. You can see change over time, for example, how a building was constructed sometimes over thousands of years. You can see changes to the site. Who lived there? What were their professions? Um, uh, were there children in the house? You know, there's lots of um, really granular data that is available in archives that you know can be um, applied to these digital maps and allow users to ask very new kinds of questions um, that would have been so challenging and so time-consuming using traditional um, archival research methods. Many of our digital humanities projects that work with space, you know, we're working on very complex, archivally based, very, very specific scholarly problems, but they're also trying to recreate environments that can then be explained to a much broader public. Augmented reality really makes that possible, where you can go into a city and you can use your phone or any kind of, of device and you can start to layer historical evidence or historical views or historical material onto that physical environment. And I think by reflecting on, on the past and what these, these sites um, were like then, what we can see today, I think it does sort of awake, awaken us a, a, a deeper understanding of how our own um, physical lived existence takes place amidst culture, amidst artworks, and um, you know, hopefully you know, it makes one you know, more sensitive and thoughtful about those experiences that, that surround us at all times. Mm -hmm.